Oh no, Jones. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> we can film this together. Would you like that? Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I decided to make another video. I'm here wearing my new Flowers and Fantasy Co. sweater. This is not sponsored in any way, but I just want you to know about them because I'm obsessed. I immediately got cat hair on it, obviously. I've been seeing everyone get their orders in from Flowers and Fantasy Co. on Instagram, and I just had major FOMO because I wanted specifically this one. The Eagles are coming for a while. Um, so then I did go to their shop and order three things. I'll post what I got on my Instagram, but I'm gonna link the shop down below. There are also tons of different affiliate codes floating around to get you a discount. I'm sure someone will post an affiliate code in the comments. Can you get her out of here? Where is she? She might have settled down now, but she was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's in a box. Can you at least put her in a different room? Bye, Jones. Bye, Jones. This is the box from Flowers and Fantasy Co. My sweaters came in. Anyways, the video is not about that. Um, this bit, what is this video? Oh, this is a video where I admit that I was wrong about something. Mm. Now it's not an important thing, it wasn't anything factual that I was wrong about, but I have expressed an opinion, I don't actually know outwardly, I think I did in a previous video in, in one of my like least favorite tropes videos, I mentioned this, but I actually was planning on doing an entire video talking about a book narration style that I hate. But upon doing more research and putting more thought into that video, I realized that I don't hate it at all and I think my mind has changed and I now love this thing. Who am I? So I've always maintained that I really dislike books with the interview style narrative. And what that is, is basically when the main character, usually the main POV character, is telling their story to another character, and that's the way we, the reader, are fed the story. The first example of this that comes to mind, and the reason why I was gonna make this video, is sort of based on this book, and it's The Name of the Wind. So if you've read The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, you'll know that our main character, Kavoth, he is just being a bartender in, in, in present day when someone comes in and interviews him about his life. And that's the setup for the story, is Kavoth just telling this guy how he got to where he is now. And sure, it's exciting, I guess, but I, notoriously, not a big fan of The Name of the Wind, and I've read other interview style books where a character is either telling or writing their story, and I've always thought, like, I don't like this, and the reason must be because I don't like this style. But when I was putting together a list of books I thought I didn't like because they are interview style books, I realized that I, I'm wrong. A lot of my recent favorite reads have been interview style books. My whole identity's changing. And I think the book that truly changed my mind about this was Empire of the Vampire. Now I did a full review of Empire of the Vampire on this channel before that you might have seen where I talk a lot of crap about this book, but one of the things I am specifically not hating on is the narrative setup. Very similarly to Name of the Wind, our main character Gabriel is being interviewed you find this out at the start of the book. He is being interviewed on how he's gotten to where he is now. He is being asked to tell his life story. And when I realized first reading this that that's how it was set up, I was like, oh God, I'm gonna hate this book. But I didn't hate the book. Despite all of the problems that I had with it being a, a ripoff of The Last of Us, I don't hate the book. I don't hate the way it's written. I don't hate the interview. I don't hate that. So what is the difference? What is the big, big, big difference between these two books, despite, you know, the obvious, you know, plot beats and world building that's different? Like, why are these two interview styles so different to me? Well, I've been thinking about it and I will share it with you now. First and foremost, let's talk about Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear. One, I just wanna mention that this is the heaviest book I own and I don't understand why. Like, why is this so dense? This one's not, but the, it doesn't matter. I just think it's important to point out that this is a very dense book. 
and it like stresses me out. I've told this story before, but I first read Name of the Wind when I was about 11 or 12 years old because I had a crush on a boy who said it was his favorite book ever and I lied to him and told him it was also my favorite book ever. So I then had to go out and buy it and I broke the spine to make it look like I read it before he came over to my house later that day. Um, I, he told me all his favorite things about it and I was like, wow, this book sounds great. And then I actually did read it and was like, man, that boy is stupid because I hate this book. And for so long, I've attributed my hatred towards Name of the Wind to its narrative setup, this interview style, because I have always felt that I did not care. I was like, why should I care about a character or characters that are clearly alive and well and doing fine bartending telling their story to some guy. Why do I care about the story that's being told when everything works out fine? And yes, of course, bad things happen to Kvothe throughout the story. And it's, you know, it's an emotional, sad story on occasion. But truthfully, throughout both of these books, I always just didn't care. And I thought it was the writing style. It couldn't be that I don't connect with the characters themselves. It couldn't be that I was 12 and my little 12 year old brain was not powerful enough to comprehend the complexity of these books. No, no. It could not have been that I just straight up was not reading adult fantasy at that time in my life and was instead reading books about teenage vampires. It couldn't have been that. And you can imagine my surprise after having had the experience I had with these books when I went into the Pariah, the Covenant of Steel series by Anthony Ryan, realizing it is a story being told to a character that again, I was like, oh no, I will hate this book. But I didn't hate this book. I didn't hate it at all. In fact, I think about this book all the time. It's one of the books that has stuck with me the longest after reading it. And it's intangible. I can't really explain why. But I think one of the reasons is that, yes, although it is an interview style book, we our main character, Alwyn Scribe, is a scribe telling his story on, on paper, I actually connected with him. I actually enjoyed reading about this character. I was the correct demographic to be reading this book. Now I do feel that the, the narrative set up for this one in him telling his story is a little, well, it is very ambiguous, let's just say that. It's less clear what is going on, why Alwyn is telling his story, at least in the first book, than it is in The Name of the Wind. It's very obvious why we're being told Kaboth's story, Alwyn's story, nah. But the story itself is still engaging, still interesting. And I think the ambiguity actually lended to my continued intrigue in this book because I want to know specifically why am I being told this story? It's not because he is a grand hero that's done all these amazing things and we're gonna learn about him now that he's telling the life story. I want, I want to understand who is this guy? Why is he important? Why is his story being told? And I found even more pulled into Empire, the vampire for that very reason. Now you could say this has an extremely similar setup to The Name of the Wind. A renowned hero is being asked to deliver his life story so that we can understand, sorry, so another character can understand how he got there. It's not for the reader, it's for the other character. But the big difference to me as a reader was the stakes. Where in Name of the Wind, Kavath is approached in his own home, living his peaceful life, having moved on from a life and adventure, Gabriel is a prisoner in the one place he would fear most. His continued interactions with Jean-Francois throughout the, the story makes it feel like the story is still actually taking place, as well as an alternating timeline between very, very far in Gabriel's past versus much more recently leading up to his capture in Gabriel's past, whereas in The Name of the Wind, it's all linear from he is born to now. The stakes for me in Empire of the Vampire feel significantly higher and more interesting than they do in The Name of the Wind, you know? But even when I read Empire of the Vampire and realized that I didn't hate it, I still in my initial review of it said that I didn't like the interview style. I think that I was still clinging onto a part of myself that I thought existed. So I felt required to identify something I didn't like about the book and yeah, because it's a review, so I was like, oh, I didn't like the interview style because that's just who I am and I'm quirky and cool and I don't like popular things. Someone get me out of here. 
even though I've realized by now that I actually did like the interview style of that book, I went into my next interview style read, The Winter King, thinking I did not like interview style reads. But oh boy, if I didn't notice in Empire of the Vampire that I now love interview style books, The Winter King is where it's at. <laughs> the Winter King has been my top read from this year so far. I read this in January, I believe, February, um, and it's five stars. I adore this. This is gonna be the first series I ever finish. Fun fact about me, if you didn't already know, I've never finished a book series in my life. But I've read this and I read the second one, Enemy of God, and Excalibur is just sitting right above me, ready to be read. I can do it. I can do it. The main character, Durfal, is telling the story of King Arthur. We find out early on that Durfal was a close companion of Arthur throughout different periods of history, and that Durfal has been tasked by the current queen, who I, I think is a child. She wants to know about Arthur, so she tasks Durfal with writing down the story for her. Just like all these other ones, at the start of his tale, he is a child, but Durfal, the, the present day Durfal, is a very old man. What I find so interesting though, is that the childhood described and the, and the events described in this are so, so different from what we see of Durfal now. He is now a Christian priest, a monk. We know he's a prisoner, but he has completely changed faiths. He's in a completely different location. And what I like so much about this one is that although, yes, ultimately he's telling his own life story, he thinks he's telling the story of Arthur. So we're finally getting a character who's not a cocky little guy talking about how great he is all the time. Instead, we're getting a character who thinks nothing of himself and is instead talking about one of the people he has loved most and telling his story. And it just makes the writing of the Warlord Chronicles series so engaging, so compelling. I adore it. And I think this does bring me back again to characterization. This might just be a personal preference. And I mean, it is a personal preference because I know tons of people adore Name of the Wind. But I feel that when I am reading stories about characters who are very heroic telling their own tales on why they're very heroic and amazing at everything. I just don't find that as compelling as characters who are kind of pieces of shit. And it all leads me to my current read, the book where I actually finally realized that I don't hate interview style books. I like them. Because when I received this arc of The Black Hunger by Nicholas Pullen, I received this from Red Hook slash Orbit Books. I read what it was about and I saw that it's an interview style. Again, we have a character who is now very old. He's in his last couple days of life. He's in a prison somewhere and he's gonna tell us how he got there. And I was excited. I was excited. I wanted to read it so badly. And it's because I started thinking about The Winter King and I started thinking about Empire of the Vampire and I started thinking about The Pariah by Anthony Ryan and how much I loved those books. And I went, oh my God, I like interview style books. And I'm about halfway through this and I love it. I love it. We start in childhood. I have no idea what the heck is going on even at the halfway point, not a clue, but I love it. This is now a promo for The Black Hunger by Nicholas Pullen out October, 2024. Thank you Red Hook slash Orbit for sending me a copy. I still wonder, you know, why I felt so strongly that I didn't like interview style books, whether spoken or written interviews. Why did I think I really hated them for so long when really I just don't like the name of the wind, I think. And I know there's other books, unfortunately I just like actually can't remember what other books I've read that I really didn't like because they just left my mind. But I was talking to Ryan about this earlier, trying to figure it out. And he compared it to my major dislike of top-down video games. I really don't like top-down video games, which is just video games where you're looking down on everything that's happening instead of first person or third person forward perspective. I don't know. I've always said that I don't like them. I, and I don't, but nevertheless, I've been playing Stardew Valley like a fiend lately. I've been obsessed. <laughs> And it did throw me at first that that's a top-down video game, but I, it's my whole personality now. And I think the lesson I'm learning from that is that I, I need to not blame specific tropes for my dislike of things. It's to actually put some critical thinking into it and figure out what the heck I don't actually like so I can know myself better, I guess. What is the lesson we're learning from this video? Is there a lesson? Maybe the lesson is as simple as people can change. 
I think for me specifically, the lesson is that I need to not let my perception of books and their tropes m stop me from reading them. I didn't DNF Empire of the Damned because it's a continuation of that interview style book. I DNF'd it because I wasn't enjoying it generally. <laughs> Although I might be giving it a second chance, which is a spoiler for next week's upload. I don't know. I don't know if I have anything else really to say about this. Let me know in the comments below if you love Name of the Wind. I know people are going to talk about it. I'm sorry. I'll, I've considered giving it another shot. <laughs> I am curious though, if you guys feel the same way as me or like, do you love interview style books or do you hate them or are you neutral about them? Tell me your thoughts. And are there any tropes, uh, like narrative tropes or plot tropes that if you see are in a book, it makes you not read them? Because don't do that. But let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts about anything I've said today. Before I go, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell icon so you know when I upload new videos. I upload two days a week. I love you guys. Goodbye. Check out the link down below for Flowers and Fantasy Co. Not sponsored yet. Okay, bye. <laughs>